This is a monkey bar. In the past, this would have been a very common feature of our neighbourhood playgrounds. And I wanted to do a video about this because it is synonymous with my childhood playing experience, and perhaps to yours as well. But try going down to any neighbourhood playgrounds, and it's very difficult to find something like this. In fact, it will most likely look something like this, this, or this. But back to this playground for a moment. Now, this playground, yes, I admit, is of a relatively simple layout. I mean, you just have this monkey bar that climbs up to this platform right here. Down a slide, that doesn't really convey that much excitement. <laughs> but sometimes, even though it's quite simple, that's all you need for children to be able to play. Playing, as I've come to learn, is actually very important for the early childhood development. So much so that even the United Nations codified it in the Conventions on the Rights of the Child. And urban planners, even very early on, seem to understand that fact. In 1950, the British government set up what is known as the Playing Fields Committee. And they concluded that in order to improve public health, they had to substantially increase the area of play and to do sports. And that desire seems to be brought forth into Singapore's independence. Because the playground is the centre of many of the estates and neighbourhoods that were being built. They were seen as integral to the community, because this is where children can learn to play and mingle with one another. And it is also a fantastic space to develop fundamental movement skills. Children can run around while playing games, or in the case of the monkey bar, have that opportunity to learn how to climb and swing, and during that period of swinging, appreciate one's own body in a three-dimensional space, as well as to calculate risk. And it is this risk that has become a point of contention for some. You see, injuries in playgrounds are bound to happen. But paradoxically, because playgrounds are man-made spaces of play, it implies that someone is always liable if a child gets injured. And this is where the monkey bar becomes a little bit controversial. Research has always flagged the monkey bar as an unnecessarily high risk factor. One study in Singapore even pointed out that the monkey bar accounted for 66% of all playground injuries. Playground equipment such as the monkey bar can be categorized as static. And what that essentially means is that it cannot be dynamically be moved out of place. So the design of it kind of invites specific ways for children to interact with them. Other examples of static playground equipment can be the slide or the swing. Now, yes, there are creative ways to use them, but more often than not, there's a default way to interact with these equipment. For the case of the monkey bar, the aim is quite straightforward. To go from one end to the next using the bars in between. And therein lies the problem, because the chain of events for the monkey bar injury is fairly straightforward. What happens is that the child misses the next bar. Usually this is with the non-dominant hand because of lack of coordination or strength, and then a fall would occur. If it's not serious, there'll be a few scrapes and bruises and a lesson along the way. However, if the child just so happened to extend his or her arm to break the fall, or the elbow is the first point of contact to the ground because that is the natural position of the body, then you may have what is known as a supercondylar fracture, which is the fracture on the region just above the elbow. It is relatively weak, thus prone to breaking. It is extremely painful and often requires hospitalization and surgery. So with safety in mind, the Singapore government published its first standard specification for playground equipment for public use in 1999. And with it, it brought a slew of changes primarily because local design and manufacturing of playgrounds were no longer favoured compared to simply buying ready-made parts from overseas. Not only were they cheaper, but they already adhered to the safety standards that were now in place. So gone were the local designs like the Dragon and the Duff, and it made way for a new kind of playground, one that is vibrant in terms of its mix of colourful PVC pipes and plastic. It may be safer, but it feels like in pursuit of this safety, we may have lost a little bit of that national identity. Because designs of playgrounds used to be quite unique to each of its neighbourhoods. But now, most playgrounds are more or less the same. Something else that Singaporeans might have missed is sand. Sand used to be synonymous with playgrounds because it was the surface that we were all familiar with, unlike the foam that is the default surface for playgrounds today. As for the monkey bar, it was something that was hardly ever seen again. In replacement of that, one alternative is the climbing net. 
It offers a similar climbing experience, but this time it is designed in a way where the children have to use a lot more points of contact compared to the simple two or even sometimes one that the monkey bar is designed for. Now with the track ride, it is also another popular alternative to the monkey bar. Just like it, it offers you the thrill of hanging on to something. But with this design, you never feel the need to let go of your grip. And if you do find a monkey bar in your neighbourhood, it could look a little bit like this. Sure, by all accounts, this would be a monkey bar. But it has one key difference compared to those of the past. It's height. In the past, playgrounds would have monkey bars that are 2 metres tall. But now, for modern playgrounds, if they do have monkey bars, they would be substantially shorter. For instance, in this case, it is 1.8 metres tall, while other playgrounds that I've been to have it at 1.5 metres tall or shorter. It seems that the compromise is this. Reduce the height and reduce the risk factor. But it still allows the monkey bar to be present in the playground because it seems that it is still a popular favourite amongst the children. At the end of the day, the playground is a man-made space for children to play safely. And the decline of the monkey bar is just one example on how we keep reimagining this space with that priority and paradox in mind for future generations to come. Go, I need to see whether I'm in the camera. This isn't a kid's camera, that's the exercise. I'm a kid. No, he's not. I'm a kid, I'm a big kid. Oh, he can play that. Oh, yo. Can I play?